Alright, welcome to another video uh, by PharmDME, another intro to hospital pharmacy uh, video. This time we're going to be talking about vancomycin dosing. Uh, before we get started, vancomycin dosing is going to be different from hospital to hospital, pharmacist to pharmacist. Everybody does it different. Um, there will be some hospitals will have very specific protocols that everybody follows basically no matter what other hospitals may let you kind of ad lib a little bit on your vancomycin dosing so everybody's going to do it a little bit different so uh, if you watch this video just realize that everywhere is different and you will find your own techniques uh, my co-workers I think every single one of them does it a different way so if we you know each worked on one patient we would all get different dosing um, you know, there's also, you know, the, the saying, there's more than one way to scan a cat. Uh, you know, sometimes I might be right. Sometimes I might actually be wrong and somebody else was correct. Um, it really kind of just depends. So you want to just find out what's best for you. Obviously follow your hospital protocols if they have different rules. Um, or if you're watching this for school, you know, dose it the way that they tell you to do it. But this should kind of give you an idea of what to think about at the very least. And then whenever you go to do those things, you'll you'll know what it all means. Um, all right, so uh, so kind of there's for for me there's three basic steps. Uh, I, I guess these are actually kind of a little bit more standard. Uh, you know, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate a loading dose. So this is usually going to be between 20 uh, milligrams per kilogram to 25 milligrams per kilogram. Um, and then after that, you will you will calculate your scheduled doses. Usually, it's going to be you know approximately 15 uh, mix per kg. Might depend on what their uh, indication is for and things of that nature. But generally, if you shoot for 15 mix per kg, you'll you'll be okay. Um, and then you, uh, for the scheduled doses, you will need to choose an interval uh, based on renal function. And, in, and another thing, uh, for this video, I'm not going to touch dialysis patients at all. Uh, it's actually significantly easier to dose dialysis patients. Uh, we're not, we're not going to even touch on it today at all, but uh, maybe in a future video we'll, we'll do one. Um, and then moving on, uh, and then uh, you'll kind of just adjust your dose and your interval so that it lands on a whole number. Like if you did your calculations and it's you know, 100 and, or 1,215 milligrams Q seven hours or something like, you know, something weird like that. Like, obviously, that's not how you're going to dose the patient. You would round, you'd round up to maybe 1,200, 1,250 milligrams, do it Q8 or whatever. That's kind of a weird example. But, um, yeah, so uh, whenever you do all these calculations, you, you'll always end up having to round off at the end and kind of making the intervals work and moving things around at the end. Uh, and then the last thing you're going to do is just monitor and adjust the dose. Uh, this will be based on trough levels. Uh, I, there's talk of kind of A1, AUC dosing taking over for vancomycin. It seems complicated, uh, but at least for right now, I'd assume most hospitals are still doing troughs uh, for vancomycin, and that's how they're uh, adjusting doses. Um, and then, so once you get the trough, and this is the way that I do it, I guess you, maybe other people do it. What I use is ratio proportion, um, and I obtain my new dose using that, and I'll, I'll explain that later. Okay, so calculating the loading dose is pretty simple. So loading doses are not based on kidney function. Um, I put a little typo in there, but uh, simply take 20 milligrams per kilogram or, you know, maybe 25 milligrams per kilogram and then round to the nearest dose. Uh, so if you get, you know, for example, a dose by pharmacy, a 58 year old male a patient weighing 82 kilograms with a serum creatinine of 1.1. Um, you don't need to worry about the serum creatinine. You don't really need to worry about the 58. We're just going to focus on the weight. So you do 20 milligrams per kilogram times 82 kilograms. You'd get 1,640. If you were to do 25 milligrams per kilogram times 82 kilograms, you'd end up with 2,050 milligrams. Uh, so a reasonable loading dose here would be 2,000 milligrams. 
the loading dose, um, it's used so that you can reach steady state faster. Um, and so you, you kind of give this larger dose and you'll reach your steady state faster. The patient will be at uh, the levels you want them to be faster this way, as opposed to, you know, sometimes it might be Q24 hour dosing. So if you just give them like say a one gram, if you were to give this patient say one gram Q24, it's gonna take all of three or four doses before they reach their trough level. Uh, with the loading doses, you'll, you'll reach your trough level and your steady state much faster. Okay, um, so then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate your scheduled doses. Uh, scheduled doses are gonna be based on both weight and renal function and uh, simply take uh, 15 mg per kg and then you'll end up rounding it off. And then what I do slash did, and um, you can just go onto Google, just type in vancomycin dosing. If your hospital doesn't have a protocol or if you're in school and you're just kind of practicing or what have you, just Google vancomycin dosing and you'll get, I kind of just put, I typed in an example here like, uh, creatinine clearance is greater than 75, it'd be Q12 hour dosing. Creatinine clearance between uh, 40 to 74, you would do Q24 dosing. Uh, if, you know, and so on and so forth. I just kind of, just a real quick type up of one because I didn't want to copyright anybody. Um, so an example would be uh, dosing by, uh, you know, the same example as before, uh, 15 mg per kg times 82, you'd end up with a 1,230 milligram dose. And um, and then, so then you would need to figure out the creatinine clearance. So uh, creatinine clearance, it can be based on actual weight. It can be based on, based on ideal body weight. It can be adjusted body weight. I think most people will use ideal body weight to calculate the creatinine clearance for vancomycin. And then unless they're obese, and then they'll use adjusted. The thing is with this is that it's all, you're going to round it a little bit. There's a little bit of give and take. These are estimated numbers anyways. You know, you throw it into an equation and it's going to spit out a number. None of this is, is exact. So, you know, if you expect to cal calculate your creatinine clearance and you expect it to be perfect, it's not. Like, it's just not going to be. Uh, so I always kind of take all that with a grain of salt. I'll usually just do actual body weight. And if they're real heavy, you know, just realize that the creatinine clearance you end up getting is is going to be high, um, you know, versus, you know, maybe someone whose actual body weight, you know, is closer to their ideal body weight. You'll realize that it's more spot on. So usually I'll just do the calculation, uh, the Cockcroft golf um, calculation on my calculator real fast. I don't even, you know, go to some of the websites to, to get that calculator done because I can do it faster that way. But I'm not going to calculate ideal body weight or adjusted body weight or any of that. I just think it's kind of overkill when when all you're really trying to do is kind of get a close estimate. Um, so so like I said, so with the serum creatinine of 1.1, you will end up with a creatinine clearance of 75 mLs a minute. Um, so uh, what I would what I would personally do in this situation, um, you know, patients in the ER, they're going to get admitted for cellulitis or something like that. Uh, I would dose this at one gram Q12. Um, there's, there's a couple other things that will go into it, which we probably won't dive too much into here. Uh, but you have to find out like what other uh, renally adjusted drugs are they on? Are they on Zosin? Are they on another drug? Because you don't want to blow out their kidneys. And if you dose it too high, at the beginning and then their kidney function goes down by the time they get that third and fourth dose, uh, you would actually have, you know, you should have adjusted the dose and it ends up, you'll end up with a high trough. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll take these situations and I'll round down unless they're real young or they're, um, you know, they got a bloodstream infection or something like that. I'll usually kind of just round down, um, especially in this situation with the creatinine clearance of 75. That's kind of at the lower end of our little uh, example that we had up there where you would use Q12 hour dosing. You know, if this person's creatinine clearance was 125, then yeah, I would probably do 1250 Q12. But since it's at the lower end, I kind of rounded down. 
Um, so that's that's just how I personally do it. Um, so I would end up with a one gram Q12 uh, dose. All right, and then for monitoring and adjusting, so troughs are to be pulled 30 minutes to one hour prior to either the fourth or fifth dose. Uh, your goal trough, it'll be based on indication again, but usually between 13 and 20. And then uh, something I wanted to bring up here is that you have to be careful with the trough. So whenever I get a trough, I will go into the lab and I will find out when they actually drew it out and I will, you know, I'll, I'll notate that date and time and then I'll go on to the MAR and I will see when they gave both the dose, the previous dose before the trough and I'll look to see when they gave the dose that was supposed to be after the trough because you would be surprised how many times the nurse just never gave that dose before or she gave it super late, um, you know, maybe five hours late because they had a procedure or what have you, or sometimes the lab will be running behind and the nurse didn't realize it and lab will end up pulling a vank trough 30 minutes after the vank was running, you know, so now it's no longer a trough, it's more of a peak, so you'll get a reading of 45 or, you know, 30 or something and you'll panic at first and then you'll go in there and you'll realize like, oh, they pulled the trough you know, while vancomycin was currently running. Or you'll get a real low number and you'll realize that they didn't even give the dose the day before. So those are just, you know, that's something to kind of be aware of and um, uh, just always double check. So don't ever just trust the trough number without, you know, going back in and just double checking. Um, so what I would, so for this patient, uh, the the example we got here they they ended up with the trough of 12 so we were shooting for 13 to 20 they ended up at 12 it will we'll say it was a good trough uh, they pulled it at the correct time um, so it's a little on the lower end the pa the man is young let's say his uh, serum or his uh, yeah serum creatinine hadn't changed over the last four days it's been sitting at that 1.1 level uh, let's go ahead and adjust it so that we can get closer to that 15 trough. Um, so I'll apologize that I was having a hard time getting the equation, like uh, uh, the ratio uh, proportion equation on here. I'm not real good with computers, so I just did the best I could. Uh, but if you want to, just kind of write it out and I'll explain what I did. So, so what you do is you take your daily dose of vancomycin. So if it is one gram Q12, they really got two grams of vancomycin that day. So you'll take that and you'll put it over the trough that you obtained. So what you currently have is the patient's getting two grams of trough a day and that gave them a trough of 12. Then on the other side of the equation or however you wanna say it, you're gonna look for how many grams it's gonna take and you're gonna put that over your goal trough. In this case, it would be 15. Um, and then you'll do ratio proportion. So you'll cross multiply. So it'd be two times 15, and then you would divide it by 12. And I hope that makes sense. If not, Google ratio proportions. Um, and then you, you, you solve in, you're solving for X. So two times 15 divided by 12. When you do that, you'll end up with 2.5 grams. Um, and then so now we need to get that into our daily dosing, which is going to be Q12 hours, so we'll end up dividing that by two. So they're, they need to get 2.5 grams per day, um, and so we're going to put that as 1.25 grams Q12, and then that should get us up to that trough of 15. Um, you know, again, like I kind of mentioned earlier, maybe their kidney, if, if this patient's kidney function was getting worse, probably just leave this alone. Um, maybe they came in and they got hydrated with the NS and now their, uh, now their kidney function is actually better. You know, you know, you would want to adjust the dose. Uh, just some, just, you know, so it, it can get a little complicated whenever you're doing vancomycin dosing. There's a couple things to look at, but once you do it a handful of times, you'll kind of remember. Um, and don't panic if you get a good trough and it's in like the 25s or whatever, that's okay. Just push off the next dose do your ratio proportions, get the dose you need, maybe wait, you know, just maybe skip one dose and then start the dosing again, 
put in a new trough after the third or fourth, or after the fourth or fifth dose of the, or before the fourth or fifth dose of the new uh, schedule, and just go from there. Again, if you end up with a real low number, you end up with a three or something, don't panic. Give a dose right then. You can even give a loading dose. Load the patient up. Do your ratio proportion. Get the new dose that you need. Start that however many hours later. Um, something else I was going to bring up. So, you know, with that, with that 2.5 grams per day, let's say, let's say, you know, the math was a little bit different and it ended up being three grams per day. So now you have, you know, you could do one gram Q8. Uh, this patient's not the youngest patient, so usually you don't want to uh, dose too many times. So you probably still want to stick with a 1.5 Q12. Um, but it was just something I would give an example. You don't always just have to change the dose. You can change the interval. Um, you know, say our, our trough was too high and we wanted to keep the... Um, the dosing of one gram, maybe we could do one gram Q12 or one, I mean, uh, sorry, Q18 or one gram Q24 um, as opposed to changing the vancomycin dose. So that's another way to do it. You don't, you don't have to change the dose. You can change the interval also. Uh, just, just kind of realize that it, as you, the interval, you know, quote unquote, is a bigger number. It's actually going to be less vancomycin that the patient gets. So, uh, so you'll, you just, just something to think about. All right. So in conclusion, vancomycin dosing is is simple, but it can be it can seem complicated at first. Um, there are several resources to help you with dosing. Like I said, this is just how I do it. Everybody does it different. There's websites called ClinCalc. There's apps on your phone. Uh, there's a website called Global RPH. They will get the dose for you. You plug the stuff in. They each have their pros and cons. Uh, for me, whenever you, you go in, I'll use Global RPH to double check myself. Uh, you go in there and you just plug in the same values and it'll spit out a, a dosing regimen. But usually it won't end up with like whole numbers. So it'll end up with like 780 milligrams Q9 or something like that. And so you have to kind of adjust the dose yourself. But it is a good way to kind of just, you know, like, well, how many grams are they given in a day? And am I given that same amount of grams in a day? And if the numbers are way off, like maybe you miss something. Um, that's happened to me several times where you go to dose something, you double check yourself on Global RPH or whatever website or app you use. And you're, you're off by a gram a day or something. And it's like, oh, well, actually their kidney function was a little worse than I thought whenever I was first doing this. Like maybe I should dose it different or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it for vancomycin. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And again, please like and subscribe.